Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a very special episode of CSGO News. Going to start off today with some speculative evidence against the CSGO crash scandal. If you guys have not heard about this on the forums as of late, we had hundreds of people attest to this last week, so that is my back evidence for this, guys, is we had the backing of a couple hundred people who saw this occur on a website known as CSGO Crash. So as of right now, I'm going to be blacklisting CSGO Crash. I would not recommend you guys use them. They seem very weary, especially if you guys make a lot of money off them. Expect some sketchy things to happen. So first off, I want to give you guys the background of this potential 50 to 60 thousand dollar scam so it started last week October 10th is when it all went down I was contacted by a man by the name of element that's what we'll call him during this story element told me he started on October 10th with $700 in his balance on CSGO crash within the span of 36 hours we had several hundred people see him actually turn that $700 all the way into 50 to $60,000 on the website which is absolutely insane in the process I believe he withdrew anywhere from two to three thousand dollars worth of skins so before you guys feel really bad for him he did still make money on the website Site, but he was potentially cheated out of you know forty to fifty to sixty thousand dollars worth of skins. And after he made all this money, guys, it was on October tenth where the website posted a very lousy in-game chat update and say that one person in particular, they did not actually reference Element's name in this in-game chat update, had actually had a security breach on the website and their hash codes had been debriefed or someone had actually uh, leaked their hash codes and could see the crashes ahead of time. Obviously, a big problem there for the website. Now, I do want to talk to you guys. Also, you can see in the screenshots right now in this announcement, you can see people saying. I knew he wasn't legit. I knew Element wasn't legit. So people on the website obviously knew who he was. I mean, he was kind of the Robin Hood of this short stint of time because obviously when you have a gambling website and people winning money from them and the gambling websites for one is losing money, people are going to back this guy and be very happy about that. Now, also I want to do talk to you guys about his balance was cleaned after this very briefly. Again, he do, he still withdrew two to $3,000 of the skins throughout this time period, but his balance was cleaned on October 10th and they further disclosed no information to him as to why and they just ceased all contact with him. On top of this, further uh, in, in kind of incriminating evidence here, you guys know I tweeted out a week ago, I actually said directly to CSGO Crash, DM me, that was an entire week ago. I got no response to that, so instead I made a big tweet, which all of you guys, we had a couple hundred retweets on that, thank you very much. That was three entire days ago, three whole days ago, and yet no response publicly from CSGO Crash or privately. They have you know, apparently no further information disclosed to all of us as to why they did this. So further incriminating evidence, I, I think if you're a website that wants to defend their credit and you know, their, their liability there. I think they would definitely have reached out to me. They did not do that. So on top of that, they also had three admins who were kicked from the website, admins who obviously did not cohere to them doing this, and they had reacted in a way where the CSGO crashed and made them look further guilty. So they kicked those admins, and they are no longer working for the website. They also blocked contact with them. On top of all this, uh, you know, further incriminated evidence, but again, speculative at best. I want to talk to you guys about the hash 256, a security code, kind of like a security code that many of these gambling websites use. I believe hash 256 is a pretty popular one. And I want to talk about how this security breach could have happened and how these hash codes could have been cracked. I have several coding friends online as well as my own roommates, a computer engineer and a coder himself. And I can talk to you guys right now after talking to all of them that hash 256 is one of the most popular used out there. Now, although it's not the top tier security, you know, it is possible to crack. It's nearly impossible to crack, and it's one of the most commonly used ones out there. And of all the gambling websites we have seen so far, we've probably heard of hundreds of gambling websites now. How many of those have announced that, hey, our hash codes have been leaked? Hey, our hash codes have been cracked? Yeah, I've heard of zero so far. So if they are using hash 56, which we can assume they are, none of these other websites have had this happen before. So it seems kind of convenient after, you know, gambling's been around for so long, after after so many months and pot, potentially years of CSGO gambling, now in this one instance we hear, oh, security breach, hash codes were leaked. This guy made $50,000 of us, let's call security breach. You know what, clean his account, mute all contact, let's not respond to any public, uh, public announcements whatsoever, let's keep on going because people won't care at all. So yes, I do not believe there could possibly be a security breach. Even if there was, the amount of time dedicated to this would have to be extraneous and very extreme. Um, so I do personally believe, guys, with the evidence I've given you, obviously a lot of it, you know, there's not too much to talk about besides the backing of all these people who saw this occur. Hope you guys do believe me. Just be weary going forward. And again, we have another large scam on our hands with CSGO gambling. If you guys are a large gambler, I think you're better off going to a casino. And in some brief ECS news, guys, we're only three weeks into the ECS. As we know, ESL Pro League concluded last week. ECS started up perfectly timed. We're only three weeks into this. 
this, but it was last night. It was Liquid versus Immortals in a best of two matchup. And this is particularly the reason why I can no longer place faith in Liquid, especially you had a surprise performance at ESL New York where they placed so well there. And then they come back online and do this in ECS. They were destroyed by Immortals last night in two maps. It was 16 to two and 16 to one. Yes, I mean, it was it was a pitiful match to watch and very, very sad. Now at one point to add further insult to, to this actual scorecard here on HLTV scorecard, uh, it was the highest ADR member of Team Liquid's roster was not even a current roster member for them as Hiko's internet went out during one of the maps and for two rounds we had one of the E United players known as A2Z stand in and so because he only played two rounds he went 0-2 but just to add further insult to this very ugly performance by Liquid but they are currently 3-3 three and three in ECS but that did happen last night it was just not really fun to watch and hopefully they're going to come back a little stronger in the future and then some very important Counter-Strike news for any of you guys who are Chinese, Korean or Renegades fans in particular I want to talk to you guys about our final eight teams for the Asia Minor Championships which were finalized yesterday those will be listed on screen as of right now and why I'm worried for Renegades. So first off, as many of you know, for this Asia Minor Championship, the top two of these eight teams placing here, so pretty much the two finalists here of this tournament, will automatically qualify for an offline qualifier for our next major, which will be the E-League Major in January. Why it's so important is because only two of these teams can move on, Renegades being one of those teams who actually chose this Asia Minor Championship over the ESL Pro League Finals for that one sole purpose of having a potential to qualify for our next major. We've talked about this. I believe Thorne and Moses and uh, Yanko talked about this extenuously, so I want to touch on this very briefly as well. Now, Thorne, one of those people who are thoroughly convinced that Renegades will be one of those top two teams at this Asia Minor Championship. I want to tell you guys, I am not convinced as of right now, especially what we've seen from Renegades in these past few months, especially with this new lineup. They have really showed us not much at all in their past tournaments, a lot of second places, a lot of third to fourth places among these Chinese and tier two, tier three teams. A Renegades team who actually has showed us a lot in ESL Pro League North America, obviously North American ESL Pro League, not to be too heavily compared compared to the European Pro League, but still placing top six there, technically seventh because Liquid stole their spot as they did choose Asia Minor Championship. But still, besides ESL Pro League, that a decent standing there, finishing top half there. They are definitely a team to be dealt with. Besides that, though, a team in past tournaments who has not shown us a finishing quality. I'm not really convinced they will be top two here. Now, why I want to say this is because at this Asia Minor Championship, in order to place top two, they're going to have to fight through a lot of teams, including the number one Chinese team, Tai Lu. As many of you know, a definite number one team here. I think Tai Lu in this group of eight is the only team guaranteed a spot this offline qualifier for the next major. Also going to be competing with the number two Chinese team, arguably at least a top three Chinese team. That is going to be Cyber Zen, a team that Renegades has struggled with in the past. We'll talk about that in a bit. And also our fourth team, including Renegades guys, who's going to be competing for these final two spots, I do believe will be our top Korean team, and that will be MVP Project. Now, I don't believe MVP will actually qualify, but still going to be a competing team who could take away a game from Renegades and possibly hinder their results. So on top of this, I do want to talk about the past. Renegades, obviously a completely new roster, but a couple months ago, that former Renegades roster, again, a completely new five-man roster, so not much relevance here. They actually lost in a best of three to Tai Lu. Tai Lu, a team incredibly tough to play for a first time if you don't study them especially hard. But also, on top of this, a very important key point here, guys, is this same five-man Renegades roster. A couple weeks ago, I believe it was three to four weeks ago in Asia, it was Extremes Land Zowie. They actually lost to a best of three series to Cyber Zen a team they're going to be competing with again in two weeks time at this Asia Minor Championship. So of the four teams I believe are competing for these last two spots, that is MVP Project, Tai Lu, Cyber Zen, and Renegades, they're not the top two teams. It's going to be very curious to see guys how they do. Renegades will have to pull off some really cool stuff to actually qualify for the offline qualifier and then even a farther fetched idea to actually make the major after that. So this is only step one of two of their plan. I wish them the best of luck, but that's why I'm not convinced guys, but the Asian minor championships should be a great time to see. We also have some South African teams and I believe Indonesian teams there. So it's going to be really cool to see who shows up with some new talent. Also a quick personal update for all of you who are following my, my t-shirt progress. I'm going to be launching a website in a couple of days here for all of you to buy my first uh, line of t-shirts. I'll only be selling 50 of them. Why I keep telling you guys about this is because I'm extremely nervous. There's been so much time and effort going into this and I just, I'm extremely nervous to see how it goes. I'm actually going home today to pick up all my shipping supplies and I will be hand delivering all these t-shirts to all of you. So expect in three to four days, guys, I will have a video of CSGO news. And at the very end of that video, I'll be saying, by the way, the the t-shirt is live. First 50 to go, get a t-shirt. And also on top of that, I'm going to be handwriting the, the 50 people who actually buy t-shirts. I'm going to be handwriting them all letters and I will be shipping them right from my home apartment. So I'm going to take, probably be taking videos of that too. So I'm just really nervous for that and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the designs and they're going to be as cheap as possible. I'm still developing pricing for all of those. So that was a quick update. Gosh dang it, every time. Yeah? 
Yeah? Okay. I want to apologize not only for the trains that go by every single clip, but also I want to apologize for keeping these episodes kind of short lately. I want to, my goal like episode length from now on is going to be 10 minutes or less. So sorry for the lack of stories today. I was actually going to involve only CSGO crash and that story for one episode, but I threw, I decided to throw in some other extra CSGO news stories as well. So that's why they were kind of lacking, but I thought the other CSGO news stories were kind of good today. But again, my goal from now on is going to be around sticking around to 10 minutes long videos. Hope you guys all enjoy it. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you and this episode was so much fun to make. Thank you all for the great support these last few days and I will see you all very soon. Remember, my name is Jake. I like you. Goodbye.